Hey there, this is Doug Smith. I'm broker owner DHS Realty. And I uh, just wanted to uh, give a little Thanksgiving update, uh, talk about how really real estate started back when the uh, pilgrims came over. And um, obviously, uh, country was already uh, founded by natives. Um, but um, uh, when pilgrims came over uh, to discover the new world uh, as Europeans, they uh, were obviously fleeing religious persecution and prosecution. Um, but when they settled here, they decided as they formed a government that they wanted to do something revolutionary and they wanted to give private citizens private property rights. And that system that we know today is our only right in private property is ginormous and it's called the allodial system. It's spelled all O dial like soap or dial a phone. So all O dial, allodial. <clears throat> and it's all right in private property. And with that right, as the country started to become urbanized, so as people left from the Northeast and settled the West, uh, the Western frontier, um, the pre-colonial days, as people set out to settle, um, they would stake claim to a property. And when they staked that claim, they were able to, they were able to call it their homestead. And with that automatically came a homestead protection which said that basically minus four entities, nobody can ever take your home away. And we know today that the number one right the government has in our property is called taxation. And it's a Latin word that means ad valorem or ad valorium. Um, it's the number one right on a house. It's a lien. It's a law established that gives a creditor the right to take your home if you don't pay them. And um, in this general area, DFW, it runs about 2.4%. So you're going to take the assessed value um, and that's done by the county. Uh, you'll have an assessed value. That's an assessment done by an assessor and you'll get that around March or April. And it'll tell you the assessed value of your home times the tax rate, which is generally about 2.4% will equal your ad valorem tax. And most Americans pay that one twelfth each month. Um, so at the end of 12 months, they paid one full year. Uh, that's the number one lien on your home. And uh, if you pay them, nobody can take your home away um, other than that first lien holder, which there's basically four to five of these lien holders. Um, the second one is your mortgage and people will be at a Thanksgiving party or around the dinner table at Thanksgiving or at Christmas. And somebody will say, oh, what, who's your first lien with? And you'll say, oh, it's with Bank of America. But really it's with the ad valorem man, which is the, the taxing entity. The second lien holder is referred to commonly as your first lien holder, but they're really not. They're second. So you've got to pay your ad valorem tax and your mortgage. The third entity is what most homes have. I'd say about 70 to 80 percent of homes in the DFW have mandatory homeowner associations. You've got to pay them or your house can be taken. And the fourth one is anybody that does work on your house. <clears throat> it's called a mechanics lien or a material man's lien. It's a general contractor, somebody that paints your home, does plumbing work, electrical work, and you don't pay them. And that's referred to as a specific lien. And I always like to tell people the best way to remember it is if you started your car today and it was making a thumping sound, that wouldn't be an issue that you would take to a Jiffy Lube, but you would take it to a mechanic. And as you pulled into the mechanic shop, they would ask you, what's wrong with your car? And you would say, I have a specific problem that needs to be addressed by a mechanic. And specific is a specific lien, which is a mechanics lien. You pay those four. Sometimes it's also the home equity lien. I'm not going to cover that today, but you cover those four and nobody will take your home away. And that basically started back when properties were settled in the West. And after the home was built, um, the cowboy in the family would generally go into town and gamble and possibly gamble the deed away, smart off after having a few drinks and get shot and killed before they get back home. So the next morning, there was a, a widowed wife in a house with kids and somebody would knock on their door and say, you're in my house. So we have what's called a homestead protection, which is automatic, can't be waived. And it protects somebody as long as they pay those four to five uh, lien holders that nobody can take their home away. Um, so that's pretty unique in the fact that uh, that's a ginormous right we have here in America. And um, the system that allows us to do that is called the loyal system. Um, so when you buy a home, you pay for something called a title policy. Uh, back when I got my license 30 years ago, 
pre-printed in the contracts. It said that the title policy was paid by the seller. And there was always just a good rule of thumb to say that it was about 1% of the sales price. Today, in our contracts, it's negotiable. And up until really about 11 months ago, the seller still basically paid the title policy. Um, it was uh, always negotiable, but it was just kind of known that that was a seller expense in a balanced market. But in the last 11 months, as we've seen a shrinkage in inventory, uh, more and more, the buyer has moved that over to the buyer as an expense to pay, and it helps net the seller more. And when you make multiple offers, that's always going to be something that you want to look at if you're a buyer's agent and something that you almost demand if you're a seller's agent. Um, of course, we know that if you're a buyer's agent, you're the selling agent, S-E-L-L-I-N-G. And if you're the seller agent, you're also commonly referred to as the listing agent. Um, but at the end of the day, I haven't seen many buyers not pay for the title policy in the last 11 months. And basically what happens is a title company will research all the way back to right around 1845 and they'll check for all the liens, all the, all the written documents and all the owners back to sovereignty of soil. And then they'll issue a, a, a title policy uh, to the buyer and the most protection you can get is called a general warranty deed. So what's a, what's kind of cool is to know a little bit about that so that if a buyer ever asks, you have a little bit of abundance you can lead with uh, some history. And um, basically there's two types of searches that are commonly done. Um, not always are they both done, but generally speaking, you'll have something called an abstract of title and a chain of title. And a chain of title is all the written owners back to sovereignty of soil. The easiest way that I like to remember that is, um, um, when I was little, we played dodgeball when it rained outside and I was always about 80 pounds soaking wet. So I was always the last one to pick uh, to be on the team for dodgeball. And um, whenever I was picked, I was usually the last one. And uh, the team kind of captain, who was probably the most popular athletic kid, uh, woman or guy or girl, um, would always look at me and say, you know, Doug, we're only as strong as our weakest link. And, you know, they'd always pronounce my name, Doug. Um, and I was always like, no, my name's Doug. And I was just excited to be picked. But um, because I was the last one, they always wanted me to know that, hey, our team's only as strong as our weakest link. And that's always been a sports analogy. And sports is made up of people. And that's why I always like to say, uh, if you get confused on what a chain of title is, just remember that a link makes a chain. And you're only as strong as your weakest link has always been about people. Um, so that is going to be the research back to sovereignty of soil of all the owners on the property. And then they do an abstract, which is also sometimes done, sometimes not done. And that's all the written documents. Um, and as long as they can account for everybody and account for all the documents, then there'll be a general warranty deed issued uh, most of the time, not always. And uh, that's the most protection. So that kind of gives you an idea of a uh, little bit about Thanksgiving. I'm super grateful to live in a country that allows us to have private property ownership um, back in the, you know, uh, early days of civilization, uh, you were only born into property. Um, and, uh, when America was founded, uh, as much as we have a lot of problems, the one thing I think they got right was, uh, they gave us the right to own private property. So I hope y'all have a great Thanksgiving. I love each and every one of y'all and, um, always lead with abundance and information and, um, have humility, be humble. And remember, uh, we've got a lot of problems in America. Be thankful for the small things, the big things, and everything in between. Y'all be safe and go get some.